Um, my name is Alia, so I'm, re I'm responding to Monica's claim that Donald Trump's presidency has a significant negative effect on the United States of America. Her three secondary claims are Trump lacks the skills necessary for negotiating with Congress, he, knew he lacks the skills for navigating through international relations, and Trump's presidency encourages discrimination based on race and religion. So I don't believe that Monica's claim is wrong, so instead I'm going to go through and analyze her supporting claims. So I have three responses to her first claim that states that Trump lacks the skills necessary for negotiating with Congress. According to articles written by The Guardian, Business Insider, and New York Times, the government was on the verge of shutting down, mainly because um, of bills like, I mean, of Trump's bill um, asking for immediate funding to build the border on the Mexi on the U.S. Mexico um, build the wall on the U.S. Mexico border, and. Um, this was um, a problem because the Congress had to meet a certain deadline, and with this, um, and with this bill, like um, with this bill needing immediate funding, it was they're having a problem meeting that deadline. So Trump signed another bill, um, softening his demand for it, which allowed um, the government to be able to meet all the deadlines. And Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer states that the president's eleventh-hour demand threatened to append the progress. We're pleased he's backing off. This proves that Trump is able to negotiate with Congress. Another one of her points referred to a tweet city in the article Trump versus Congress, What Now? by um, Robert Draper. Trump tweeted that he's only been in office for a short amount of time and has done a lot. He also claims that he may have done more than anybody else in the short amount of time. Um, Draper and my opponent immediately go on to say that Trump hasn't demonstrated his ability to make a bill into a law. Although this is true, they're committing the fallacy of a relevant thesis. The point is proven that Trump has not made a bill into a law, but that is not the point in dispute. The point in dispute is that he has that he has done a lot, and he has. With his, within his first 100 days of president, presidency, he signed 30 executive orders and 28 bills in an attempt to turn them into a law, which no other president has done before. This proves that Trump's statement is correct. Um, another point made to support the claim that Trump lacks the skills necessary to negotiate with Congress um, was based on the fact that psychologist Beth Weiser rated Trump extremely low in agreeableness based on the Big Five personality test. Um, this is used by psychologists to rank people on agreeableness, openness, extroversion, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. With this, my opponent suggests that because he rated so low in agreeableness, it harms his ability to compromise and cooperate with others. Referring to the same study used by my opponent, the psychologist who conducted the study states that, unfortunately, using the Big Five to summarize Trump's personalities, personality may be leaving out important information. With this in mind, the ranking of Trump's personality may be faulty and not accurate. Um, this reputation falls through to the second point that, that states that Trump lacks the skills for navigating through international relations because my opponent uses the fact that he ranked low in agreeableness here as well. Um, the third supporting claim, the third supporting claim states that um, Trump's pres presidency encourages discrimination based on race and religion. In reference to recent events prior, during, and after the election, this proves to be true. On the other hand, people are joining together in fear and anger to protest in support of women, people of color, and causes like the North Dakota Access Pipeline, LGBTQ community, and even the impeachment of Trump. The protests and rallies appeal to so many people that even places outside of the U.S. are holding rallies. An article titled Violence Flares in Washington during Trump's inauguration states that Trump is not going to be stopped at the top, he's going to be stopped at the bottom for people rising up. They interviewed some of the um, protesters and one said, we support the right of everybody in this country no matter what nationality, what religion, the color of the skin, to be respected as a human being. With that being said, groups of people are uniting and finding a common interest. In essence, this contradicts the main claim that Trump has a negative infect, um, effect on the U.S. So overall, um, I responded to her first claim um, um, by proving that Trump is able to negotiate with Congress, by um, proving that she used the fallacy of a relative thesis, and um, and proving that the Big Five um, personality test has its faults, which also moves on to the second, which um, that moves on to the second secondary claim. And then my third point is saying that um, people are coming together, and that could have a and that could have a positive effect on America, which disregards um, the main claim. Thank you.
All right, well, you summarized the advocate's claims pretty clearly. That's fine. I would be very careful about accepting the premise that the advocate is correct on these things as the starting point of your argument. Uh, I think it's better if, you're go if, if, you, if you want to concede that to yourself, that's fine. But uh, like I think we've talked about this before, you would be incredibly uh, liable for malpractice if you were the attorney for a defendant in a lawsuit and you said, well, I think the plaintiff's case is generally true, but let me take the position here that uh, there's some problems with it. Uh, that would seem to be inappropriate. So instead, just let's focus on the problems instead of offering you know, support for the premise and uh, challenging to the secondary claims. I thought that you did a good job challenging the first secondary claim by suggesting that uh, there has been an adjustment, that some negotiation has taken place. Uh, you know, the press on uh, Trump's accomplishments is okay. Uh, I think you did try to find some information that suggested that that, uh, you know, it does suggest that he's able to do some sorts of things, so that's okay. But I like the point better that this is an irrelevant thesis uh, when you talked about the evidence that the advocate presented, and then you presented your counterclaim. On the um, challenge on the uh, um, what with the agreeableness test, the psychology test that they're administering to a public figure uh, in this situation. I, I like the fact that the, ad, the person who came up with this uh, whole concept themselves suggested that we may have important things that have been left out and that it would be inappropriate maybe to make these inferences uh, at this particular time. I thought that that was a good answer to that point. On the uh, second point, uh, on the international issues, uh, since it's all based on the uh, same big five criticism, then I think that you've got a reasonable argument there too. I, I do, I'll, excuse me, although I do think there might be some other information similar to what you had on the first point suggesting uh, potential progress. I don't know uh, where, uh, for example, maybe the uh, action in Syria that he took or uh, cooperation with Israel, something like that, some illustration of uh, the way things have changed or um, moved diplomatically. I don't, I don't, there's probably some counter evidence, but I, I can see that this is a good answer that you have on that particular point. Uh, and then we're back to conceding a point to the advocate, but suggesting that the outcome is a little bit different. I, I don't know that I would concede the point, but I would think that making the argument that suggests that, that people react to uh, the president and his policies by uh, uniting and uh, forming a uh, counter group to speak on their behalf or their point of view, that's not a negative thing. I think that's the good argument there, that in essence it encourages people to participate in the process. And why is that a bad thing? The only thing that I think is problematic is when people go uh, crazy about these kinds of things. And you mentioned violence, and I, I don't know if it was in this part of the argument or another part of the argument where there was talking about violence during the um, uh, inauguration. That I think is probably a little iffy, but the idea that people you know, they want to stand up for uh, a belief that's different. I think that's a good way to go about that particular argument. Okay, thank you.